Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Carla Plasencia, and on behalf of the student world, I welcome you to this amazing live session that we have today. Um, if you can see me and hear me clearly, could you please just type in the chat, yes, we can hear you, or just a thumbs up, or whatever you want, just so I know that we are good to go and start with the presentation. I see some of you are typing, so I will just wait. Awesome. Thank you so, so much, guys. Okay, so um, I'm going to explain to you super fast how this platform works. Um, so on the right side of the screen, as you see, you have the chat. Here you can um, say hello, um, answer some of the questions that we may ask you throughout the presentation. Um, actually, if you can let us know where you're watching us from, that would be awesome. So we can like do a uh, personalized um, interaction with you and get to know you a little bit better. And if you have questions during the presentation, you can go to the second tab, which is the questions tab. Um, here I'll be monitoring the questions during the presentation and we will have a Q&A session at the end. Okay, so now I see that you're typing your countries. That is awesome. Please keep doing that, guys, so we can get to know you a little bit more. And now um, it's time for me to pass um, the, the stage to our awesome presenter for today. Um, thank you, Janae, for, um, for being here, for um, taking the time to share with us all these amazing opportunities. And the stage is all yours. Lovely, great. Uh, thank you, Carla. Hi, everyone. Good morning. It's nice and early in Edmonton. It's 10 a.m. Uh, I know it's evening in, in the Middle East, so good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining this, this webinar. I'll start the webinar by introducing myself. I'm Janaid Makbul. I'm an international recruitment specialist at Nate. I was born and brought up in the Middle East. I spent more than 20 years of my life in the region, so I understand the region quite well and what students living in the region look for when thinking of studying abroad. I've been with Nate for almost two years and I'm responsible for recruiting international students from the Middle East and Africa. That's a little bit about me. Let's now continue with the webinar. This is our agenda for uh, for the day, some housekeeping uh, rules. Please keep yourself muted. Um, as Carla said, please type your question in the chat. I will answer them after our presentation. At Nate, we honor and acknowledge that the land on which we learn, work, and live is a Treaty 6 territory. Treaty 6 territory is a traditional homeland for the First Nations and Métis peoples. And today we are all part of this treaty land. There's a long history that has brought us to be on this land. Through this land acknowledgement, we have an opportunity and responsibility to reflect on the impacts of colonialism historically and currently. As I'm sure you would be aware, Canada is one of the most welcoming, developed, and multicultural countries in the world. Based on the recent statistics, there are over 250 ethnic origins or ancestries in Canada. A great way uh, to think of Canada is to think of a mosaic. In Canada, everyone comes in different and maintains their cultural identity bound together by shared Canadian values. Canada's uh, population is around 37 million. Uh, it is the second largest country in the world. It has 13 provinces and territories. Canada is one of the few countries that offer a post-graduation work permit for international students. And it's a country that values international students. And the, uh, Canada recognizes that international students make excellent candidates for permanent residency. It is due to this fact, due to this recognition of the value of international students that back in 2021, IRCC accepted 40,000 permanent residency applications from international, for international students who graduated from Canadian institutions. From Canada, let's now talk about the province of Alberta. I'll pause for a quick few seconds 
and I'll raise this question to everybody on, on uh, who, who's attending the webinar. How many of you, and you can type in the chat, how many of you have heard of Alberta? And if you have, what are some of the things that you know about Alberta? I'll give it about 10 seconds. Rizwan, you have, lovely. Uh, what have you heard about Alberta? Well, great, absolutely, Zaha. That's that's true. Lovely. Well, at least you know there are a couple of people who have shared with me that they they know about Alberta, and I can bring everyone else up to speed about uh, this lovely province. Alberta is a province in Western Canada. We are close to Vancouver. Uh, globally, Alberta has the third largest reserve of oil and gas in the world, and therefore the largest in North America. Alberta may not be as well known as some of the other provinces, uh, but there are many benefits of living here. One of the biggest benefits is uh, there are no provincial there is no provincial sales tax in Alberta. Uh, this means you're able to save on every single item you buy or service you pay for, such as books. Now, the tax rate in Alberta is five percent. Now, if you compare that to some of the other provinces, so in the province of Ontario the uh, the tax rate is 13 percent so anything that you buy gets 13 percent added to it if you uh, talk about vancouver i think the tax rate is around 12 percent so the fact that the tax rate in alberta is five percent is, is a great benefit and it allows the residents uh to save on a number of items uh, uh they buy or services they pay for uh, Alberta also has one of the highest minimum wages in the country. Uh, it, it is around, it is 15 Canadian dollars an hour. Uh, the cost to live in Alberta is one of the lowest in the country, so you can earn a healthy wage while paying low living costs such as rent or income tax. Alberta also offers international students free health care. This means access to doctors and hospitals. The information that you see on your screen comes from the Government of Alberta Treasury Board and Finance, showing a comparison of provincial taxes by province. For a family of two parents earning 100,000 Canadian dollars a year, including all taxes, you pay the amount you see on the slide. The difference is very obvious, that Alberta pays the least amount amongst the provinces in taxes. Despite this, the standard of living in the province is quite high. If we look at Alberta's 10-year economic outlook, we will see two key trends. Increase in the number of job openings and shortage of qualified talent, essentially a recipe for opportunity. Over the next 10 years, job openings will be driven by two things. Expansion demand, this is a number of job openings as a result of growth in the sector or occupation. And replacement demand, this is the number of openings created by people leaving the labor market on a temporary basis, such as maternity leave or illness, and those retiring or passing away. The cumulative imbalance highlighted on the slide, highlighted in yellow, shows the shortage of talent. Ultimately, what this slide shows is that Alberta has opportunities for international students. Here is a more detailed look at the industries and amount of job openings projected. You can see an increase in job openings in all sectors with the highest number of openings in the sales and service occupations. Nate offers programs in every single industry and some that cross over several industries. What this means is when students graduate from Nate, they have the skills to have a successful career in all these sectors. From Alberta, let's now talk about Edmonton, the capital city of Alberta. Uh, Edmonton is a business and political hub and a high tech hub. The population of uh, the city is around 1.49 million. It is projected to grow to 2 million by 2065. Uh, 
Edmonton is not densely populated. Population density of the city is 123 people per square kilometer. If you compare that to the city of Toronto, Toronto has 4,300 people per square kilometer. It is a young city. The average age of residents is around 35. More than half of the population has post-secondary education. It's a highly developed society and it's supported by government funding. Edmonton also has the third highest immigrant retention rate in Canada. What that means is when, admin, when immigrants come to Edmonton, they tend to stick around uh, and, and stay and call Edmonton their home. I'm a great example of that as well from the Middle East. I moved to Canada, lived a few years in, in Toronto, and then uh, I moved to Edmonton and it's been a number of years and I've, I've really enjoyed uh, living in the city. Let's look at the Canadian higher education system. There are three main types of institutions in the Canadian higher education system. Colleges, polytechnics, and universities. Nate is a polytechnic. What this means is that from the time you start with us, our focus is on helping you develop employability skills. This ensures you're job ready when you graduate. The quality and standard of education is the same in polytechnics and universities or colleges. Employer acceptance is also the same. You can start at a polytechnic, study for one to two years, and enter the workforce if you want. Or you can continue on, study for four years, and then enter the workforce or go for your master's uh, at, at a university. Let's now talk specifically about NATE. NATE was founded in 1962 to address the employment training needs in Edmonton. From then to today, we have now become one of the largest uh, largest post-secondary institutions in Canada. We are the one, one of the largest polytechnics in Canada. In fact, we're considered the third largest post-secondary in the province of Alberta. We have uh, more than 40,000 students. We have four campuses across, uh, across, the, across the city. Uh, all the international students, they study at our downtown campus. So all of them are only, uh, they only study at one, uh, one uh, campus of Nate. Uh, we are ranked number three in Canada's top 50 research colleges in research income from partner organizations. Uh, the, this ranking is a reflection of Nate's long history of strong relationships with the industry and delivering results for its partners in applied research, especially in the areas of energy, environmental protection, and resource sustainability. Nate has helped thousands of individuals in developing successful careers. We have over 212,000 alumni. Some of our alumni include successful business owners, filmmakers, Olympic gold medalists, science and engineering professionals, IT professionals, politicians, TV personalities, and many more. At this stage, you may be wondering, why should you consider studying at Nate? Here's some information that might convince you to join Nate. The result that you see on your screen come from our employer satisfaction results. It shows that 98% uh, of employers are satisfied with Nate graduates and they believe that Nate graduates are prepared for the workforce. 100% of employers stated that they would hire Nate graduates in the future or recommend Nate graduates to other. Nate Graduates employment rate is 90%. So 90% of our graduates from full-time programs are able to find employment within nine months of graduating. 93% of graduates are satisfied with their overall educational experience at Nate. 96% of our graduates would recommend Nate to others. Some of the reasons why studying at Nate is great. So hands-on education. So as a polytechnic, Nate offers the, the way we deliver our curriculum. There is, it's, our focus is 50% on theory and 50% on application to allow students to practice what they study. Now, this hands-on education element really helps you develop employability skills and allows you to be job ready, work ready when you graduate. Our class sizes are small, around 20 to 40 students per class, which provides a decent environment for collaborative learning. We have state-of-the-art 
labs and technology. Most of our programs are for two years, allowing students to access the job market earlier if they wish. NATE graduates are in demand. Here are some of the companies that have hired our graduates over the years. So companies like Robert Huff, Suncor, Enbridge, Schlumberger, Shell, Scotia Bank, uh, Appcore, and a number of others. NATE is centrally located and is easily accessible. There are direct train and bus buses to the campus and student fees include a discounted train and bus pass. Uh, we're located slightly north of Edmonton downtown. Uh, it's, uh, we don't have on-campus housing. However, it's convenient to get student housing at our partner institutions, uh, such as University of Alberta and McEwen University. If you don't, uh, if you don't wanna live on, on campus housing, then there are residences because of our central location. There are residences all around Nate that you can rent. Uh, and if you're considering li living on on campus housing with University of Alberta and McEwen, uh, you know it's between uh, in terms of distance from Nate to uh, the housing, it'll be between 10 to 30 minutes uh, by train. Our students are supported throughout their journey at Nate. Uh, we have a team of licensed immigration advisors on campus who can help you with your immigration related queries and concerns. We have international students peer mentors who are current students who have completed at least one semester of study at Nate and are committed to supporting students from outside of Canada in their cultural tr transition journey. We offer newcomer booster program it's a one-week pre-training course to help you transition to studying in canada we have academic advisors to support you with planning and organizing your studies at nate we also have counselors for international students who can help you with the general well-being at nate they can provide you support and guidance in adjusting to student life meet academic demand and other well-being related concerns so that was a little bit about nate and why should you think of studying at nate now let's look at the areas of studies. Nate offers more than 100 programs to international students. These programs are offered through our four schools, the schools that you see on your screen, J.R. Shaw School of Business, School of Applied Sciences and Technology, School of Health and Life Sciences, Health and Sciences, I'm sorry, and School of Skilled Trades. Uh, all our programs are developed with input from industry and prepare students for successful careers in professions that are in demand in Alberta, Canada and worldwide. We also offer ESL classes for those who don't meet our English language skills uh, requirements, students whose prior education does not meet our entrance requirements can also apply to our academic upgrading courses. Academic upgrading courses uh, are essentially high, high school level courses and they allow you to meet entrance requirements for the program if your prior education does not make you eligible to, uh, to the program that you're interested in joining. Let's look at each of the schools and, uh, and, uh, and programs offered through those schools. The first uh, school is J.R. Shaw School of Business. Our business school is one of the largest business schools in Western Canada. Business is the common thread in every industry. Graduates of our business programs leave Nate ready to make an impact. They're equipped with industry relevant training. They are, our students are in demand and they are highly valued in the workforce. We offer bachelor's degree in business administration and technology. Uh, the Bachelor's in Business Administration is a four years program and the Bachelor's in Technology is a two years program. The Business Administration Bachelor's allows students to specialize in a number of areas, including accounting and finance, entrepreneurship and innovation, etc. We also offer diplomas in Business Administration and Hospitality Management and certificates in Financial Services and Data Analytics. Our diplomas are for two years and our certificates are for one year. So let's say if you're if you're planning to join Nate's uh, business administration program, so you have two options. You could either do a four years bachelor's, uh, and all the majors that you see uh, are on your uh, the uh, the majors that we have. You can see them on our on the screen. Uh, we also offer diplomas in uh, business administration in the same majors that you see uh, on the screen. Uh, and then 
like I mentioned, our diplomas are for two years and our certificates are for a year. Uh, the two years bachelor, the Bachelor of Technology, it's uh, it's a two years bachelor's. Uh, it's primarily meant as a two plus two program. So let's say you already have a technology related two year diploma and uh, or undergraduate diploma and you want to top it up with another two years of education to get your bachelor's, then the Bachelor of Technology would be the right program for you. The second school is School of Applied Sciences and Technology. Nate offers 44 programs through the schools that are tailored to the needs of industry sectors to, that drive Alberta's economy. You'll see our graduates working in the numerous infrastructures, buildings, and technology and engineering projects across Alberta and Canada. The blue headings uh, that you see on your screen um, are the sectors, and you will see few highlighted programs in each. For some sectors, there are more programs that are not listed. So it's not an exhaustive list, but the, no, most of our programs offered through the school are listed here. We have uh, programs, in, uh, we have sectors uh, in analytical sciences. Students in this category will work in lab researches, clinical procedures, and data analytics. Usually they'll end up in healthcare, pharmaceutical, food, or oil and gas. The, other, uh, the second sector uh, in which we offer programs is renewable resources and environmental services. Uh, you'll work in conservation and ma you'll manage sustainability. The third sector is energy. Uh, the energy sectors are for students interest interested in the oil and gas industry. As you know, Alberta has the third largest oil reserve in the world. You'll be learning about the extraction, distribution, and processing of these fuels. And all the programs that you see on, on your screen, majority of them are two years diplomas. There might be some one year certificates here, but majority of them are two years diplomas. Still continuing on with School of Applied Sciences and Technology, the next sector is construction management and design. It teaches students to assist in the management and design of construction and civil engineering projects. As Edmonton is a booming city that is quickly developing, construction is a great industry to be in. Uh, the next sector is IT, information and communication technology. IT is a fast paced and quickly growing industry in Alberta. As per a recent report by Alberta Enterprise Corp, Alberta is now home to more than 3000 tech companies. That's, that's a 233% increase in the last 10 years. The next uh, sector is manufacturing and automation. It involves electronics and mechanics as many uh, industrial and manufacturing processes become more automated. The career opportunities in this area will continue to grow. Uh, then uh, we are, the, next, uh, the next sector is media and communication. It is for students who like creating meaningful contact, uh, content to connect with others. And all most of the programs that you see here are also two-year diplomas. Some might be one-year certificates. There are some bachelors here as well. Uh, for example, the Bachelor's of Applied Information System Technology. That's a two-year bachelor's uh, meant uh, as a two plus two. So if uh, somebody has already has a two-year diploma, undergraduate diploma, and they wish to top it up with a, another two years uh, education, that then leads them to a bachelor's. This program would be right for them. The next school is School of Health and Life Sciences. Uh, the School of Health and Life Sciences has a rich tradition of educating allied healthcare professionals. Uh, allied healthcare professionals are not doctors or nurses. Uh, they are medical professionals who work to prevent, diagnose, and treat diseases and illnesses. They also support healthcare systems and apply scientific principles and evidence-based practices to assist patients. NADE offers 16 programs to international students in health and life sciences that are either two-year diplomas or one-year certificates. NADE uses simulations and with state-of-the-art equipment, model, models and actors. We have a full-scale simulation center uh, providing scenarios in a safe and controlled environment. And finally, the fourth school is School of Skilled Trades. Uh, school of Skilled Trades uh, offers around 14 programs in diplomas and certificates. All the programs that you see are either diplomas or certificates. Uh, NAIT School of Skilled Trades is a leading training provider to students in these programs that you see on your screen. Skilled Trades play an integral role in the safe operation of industries in Alberta's economy. Skilled Trades are 
strictly regulated in Alberta. There are strict regulations on work hours, pay increases, and health and safety. So that was a little bit about our programs, uh, our schools and programs. Now, if you're unsure of what program at Nate you want to go for, we have a great uh, find your feature quiz. Uh, it is essentially, it, it works like a personality quiz. And it, when you access it, so the link uh, uh, the link that you see on your, uh, on your screen, nate.ca slash find your feature will take you to the quiz. And it'll ask you some, uh, certain questions about your personality, your preferences, et cetera. And based on, uh, based on your answers, it'll, tell, it'll give you a few options, a few programs that you can consider. So if you're unsure, this is a great quiz. I'll highly recommend that you take it. Now, if you want more information on our programs, one of the ways you can get that information is by accessing our website and going to the program pages. Now, some of the information that I would recommend that you look at is uh, the start dates of the programs. Uh, so we have uh, three intakes in a year. So we our fall semester starts in September. Uh, st starts in September, finishes by December. Then our winter semester starts in January. Uh, January, February, March, April is, is our winter semester. And then we have our spring uh, semester, which starts in May and then May, June, July, August. Uh, so have a look. Some of our programs are offered across the three intakes. Some are only offered in, 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 in the fall. Uh, some are only offered in into fall and winter, so make sure you, the program that you're looking at, you know, it it, it uh, you know when it when it is started. Uh, check out the length of the program. So majority of our programs, our diplomas are for two years. We do have four year bachelors as well. See if the program accepts international students or not. Then you can look at the course details and prospects. You can look at the entrance requirements and how to apply. So, and you can look at graduate employment rate, et cetera. So all the relevant information is on our website. Uh, so if you, if you access it, it'll, you know, even if it tells you about career opportunities, you know, what can you do after finishing the program, et cetera. Now, when it comes to entrance requirements, uh, there are two types of entrance requirements that you will need to meet, academic requirements and English language requirements. So for English language requirements, most, prog uh, most programs require the scores that you see on your screen. Now, one thing that I want to highlight for those who are interested in applying for our fall 2023 semester, our September 2023 semester, the, and if you're if you're if you're doing IELTS, so you'll need academic IELTS with overall score of 6.5 and no score under five. For those who are looking to study from winter 2024, January 2024. Uh, we have modified our IELTS requirement, and what we would require from students uh, would be, from applicants would be, a score of six in each area of IELTS. So, listening, reading, writing, etc. All the all the areas of of IELTS, you need to have 6.0 in each section. And if you if you're doing uh, TOEFL, it's 80-20. Uh, you know, with uh, overall, uh, so uh, overall score of 80 with no score under 20. And uh, if you're doing Duolingo, uh, you'll, uh, you know, uh, you'll need a minimum of 150. So that takes care of the English language skills. Now, when it comes to academic requirements, now, when you visit our website and when, when you see what you see on the screen as well, you'll see, uh, you'll see courses such as English 30, Math 30, Chemistry 30, Biology 30. Now these are Alberta high school subjects. And our admissions team will want to, will equ uh, equate your current education with Alberta high school courses. So almost all our programs will require you to have English and math, right? And uh, like as a standard rule, uh, 30 level courses are considered equivalent to 12th grade courses in most educational curriculums. 20 level courses are considered equivalent to 11th grade uh, courses in most curriculums. 10 level courses are considered uh, grade 10 level courses in most educational curriculums. Some of some NATE programs have competitive entrance requirements. Now, uh, so for example, uh, the example that you see on your screen, which say where, where it says competitive entrance requirements, uh, seventy three percent overall average. So you need to have a minimum of seventy three percent overall for you to be considered uh, for your uh, for your uh, the, for, for the program that you've applied to. Now, for 
Middle Eastern students, your entrance equivalencies will depend on the curriculum that you have studied. For students who have studied the local Middle Eastern curricul uh, curriculum, Tanawiyama, the general secondary education certificate as it's called, for English 30, you will need English plus Arabic. So two courses to get English 30 equivalency. Uh, for other subjects, it's like for like. So if you've studied in your uh, Tanawiyama, if you've studied math, uh, then you're, uh, you should be able to get math 30 equivalency. For students who have studied other curriculums, so for example, if you have studied uh, O levels and A levels, GCSE, GCE, etc., equivalencies are like for like. So if you've done O levels, A levels, English, then you should be able to get English 30 equivalency. If you've done O levels or A levels uh, math, then you should be able to get uh, uh, math 30 equivalency. For uh, for students who may have studied the CBSC, the Indian uh, curriculum, then equivalency is like for like so if you've done uh if you've done english in your 12th grade in uh, cbsc it's uh uh you know you'll get english 30 equivalency now the number of uh, attendees from pakistan so if you've done uh, if you've studied from the federal board of pakistan uh then uh, to get english 30 you will need english plus urdu in your 12th grade and everything else is like for like so if you've in your federal board if you've done math then you'll get math equivalency if you've done english plus urdu both then you'll get english 30. so to summarize all of this uh when you apply to nate you need to meet two types of interest interest requirements academic plus the english language english language the scores are on your screen for academic uh our admissions team will uh will look at your education and equate it to alberta high school courses uh and for most programs, you will need English and math. Most of the time, it'll be at the 30 level. And 30 level will be your grade 12 courses. Now, uh, for some programs, we have specific pathways for post-secondary students. So for example, if somebody is interested in studying a business diploma at NATE, one, one way to enter the program is through your high school courses. The other way is if you've done a post-secondary education and you, you get a minimum minimum of 2.3 overall GPA, then you can go into the business program through your post-secondary education as well. So I hope that that clarifies. If there's any confusion, any questions, please feel free to type in the chat, and I'm happy to answer them uh, after I'm uh, after I'm finished with the presentation. For students who are interested in studying English as a second language, uh, we offer ESL classes at NATE. Uh, when you finish level six with a minimum grade, you will not need to take any further English tests. Uh, so again, uh, you know, you, you you apply to the ESL program, you take the ESL level placement test, and the placement test decides where you start, which level do you start, and there are a total of six levels. And the fees and everything, the information you, uh, is is on uh, on the slide. Now let's look at the total. Let's look at the cost now. The two types of costs uh, that you'll incur uh, when studying at, at NATE in Canada. One is your tuition fees, uh, the fees that you pay to NATE, and then your living costs, uh, the cost that you will have uh, to pay to live in Edmonton, your daily and your you know your regular cost of living. So when when it comes to uh, tuition at NATE, majority of our programs uh, cost between twenty to twenty. 4,000 Canadian dollars uh, annually. Uh, now, almost 90 plus, 90 to 95% of our programs would be between 20 to 24,000 Canadian dollars a year. It's only our medical programs that are beyond that. So they may uh, go from above 24 all the way to 33,000 Canadian dollars. For non medical programs, all of them would be between 20 to 24,000 Canadian dollars. And in addition to the tuition fees, uh, you'll have your books and supplies, your transit passes, association fee, recreation, and athletics fee. So again, the, uh, the information is on the slide. So that's your tuition fees. The second is your cost of living. Now, one of the benefits of living in Edmonton is it's much cheaper to live in Edmonton. The cost of living is a lot more affordable in, in Edmonton compared to some of the other uh, cities and provinces in, in Canada. So your cost of living, again, depends on your lifestyle, depends on uh, you know the kind of expenses you have, but you can expect to spend anywhere from twelve dollars to $15,000 Canadian a year on your cost of living. 
Uh, so in terms of your total cost, it will be between, I would say, twenty-six to thirty-six thousand dollars Canadian a year. Uh, a little less if you're doing a non-medical program. Now, one way to uh, to manage your cost of living is working as a student in Alberta. Now. Alberta, as I said uh, in, uh, earlier in the presentation, Alberta has one of the highest minimum wages in Canada, $15 an hour, uh, and international students can work while they study. So if you're doing a uh, degree diploma certificate program at NAIT, uh, then on campus, you can work unlimited hours. And if you're an ESL student, English as a second language, or you're doing academic upgrading, uh, you can work on campus unlimited hours. Now to work, uh, so for us off campus work, ESL and uh, academic upgrading students cannot work off campus, but degree diploma certificate students can work on campus. Now the, the standard rule in Canada is during the school term, so when the semester is going on, uh, the maximum an international student can work is 20 hours a week. Uh, and they can work during the scheduled breaks, they can work unlimited hours. Now, recently, uh, the, uh, the government of Canada has removed the 20 hours cap, at least until the 31st of December, 2023. So, and so that 20 hour limit has been removed until 31st December. So until 31st December, even during the school term, students can work unlimited hours. But we always recommend that, you know, you're, you're here to study and you'll have better opportunities, better career opportunities once you finish your education. So we always recommend that, yes, please, you know, uh, take advantage of working while studying, but your focus, your focus should be on studying. Now, uh, we also recommend students to it's best to bring enough money to cover your first year of tuition and living costs. Towards the end of your first year, beginning of your second year, you should be able to earn enough to support your cost of living. Now, we have done some math on your potential uh, earnings during school term. So let's say you're working uh, at minimum wage of $15 an hour, you're working 20 hours for a whole month. You're looking at uh, earning around 1,200 Canadian dollars a month. So that takes care of a good chunk of your cost of living. Now, one of the benefits of studying in Canada is you can study here, you can work here, and if you wish to immigrate, settle down, you have that option as well. Uh, or if you wish to take that education that you've gained here, go back to your home country and, and contribute to the economy, you can do that as well. Now, here's, a, here's an example of how your, your timeline in Canada can look like. So let's say you start in fall 2023, uh, for a uh, for a two years program, so you'll you arrive in Canada, uh, you know you do uh, four semesters by uh, April 2025. You know you've done your uh, you know you've done with your program, you've gained some work experience. You will get a post graduation work permit. Uh, our, our programs are eligible for post graduation work permit, so you get a post graduation work permit. You can work for two to three years. And after working for two to three years, you can then apply for permanent residency. And then from there, you can apply for citizenship. Students usually look for a job and apply for PR nomination during this the three period, uh, the, during this three year period of work. Now, the most important thing to note about post-graduation work permit is that you can only get it once in your life and that it's not extendable unless you have already been nominated for permanent residency. Uh, Nate is a, uh, it's, it's a public institution. We are a designated learning institution. So that means we are, uh, we are allowed by the government to host international students and our programs are eligible for post-graduation work permit. Now it's important to take the right program length. Uh, as per the rules of the government, if you're taking a program that's less than eight months, you're not, you, you'll not be able to get a post-graduation work permit. If you do a program of a one year, uh, you'll be able to get a post-graduation work permit for up to one year. Uh, if you do a program of two years or more, you can get a post-graduation work permit for up to three years. I'm just on my last few slides. Now, this is how our application process looks like. Uh, so the application, uh, our application open dates are staggered across the, throughout the year. So we have three intakes, as I mentioned earlier. So for fall uh, 2023, the applications open in 2022, 1st October 2022. 
for January 2024, applications open on uh, March 1st, 2023. So currently, both fall 2023 and uh, winter 2024 applications are open. Some of the programs in, in fall 2023 have already been filled, but there are some programs that are uh, open. Applications for May 2024 will open on 1st June 2023. Now, before you apply, what you should do is check the program requirements and program availability. We have a program availability page on our website, so it tells you uh, whether the program you're interested in is, 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 uh, is available or not. Make sure you check the requirements, whether you need English 20, English 30, Math 30, Math 20, what are the subjects you need, make sure you meet the requirements. Then check the study permit processing time. Um, on average, I think depending on where you are from, it takes anywhere from 13 to 14 uh, weeks. Again, please make sure you check the website. Some, uh, you know, the processing time uh, it, it it varies. Now, usually, it's a good idea to apply um, at least four to six months before the start of your preferred semester. That, if you apply four to six months in advance what it does is it allows you your application to be processed by nate to issue you a letter of acceptance and then once you get your letter of acceptance you know you then have to apply for your study permit this timeline will also allow your study permit to be processed in time so you know check the program requirements and program availability check study permit processing time uh, take English language skills test so you know whether you're taking IELTS whether you're taking TOEFL make sure you you do it and you finish it uh, get your official trans uh, transcripts translated and notarized if they're not in English. Now, this is before you apply. Now, when it comes to applying uh, to Nate, you can apply online on APAS. Uh, so it's Apply Alberta. It's a central system in Canada, in, in, in the province of Alberta, uh, through which to, uh, uh, students can apply. Our application fee is 115 Canadian dollars, and it allows you to uh, apply to up to two programs. I always recommend students to apply to two programs, even if you're very sure of just one program. It's a good idea to look through our programs and see if there is another program that you want to be, uh, you want to join. Uh, because what happens is, uh, so when you apply for your, uh, two programs, your first preference will be the program that uh, our team will uh, uh, review your eligibility for. If you're eligible, we have a seat, we'll put you in your first program and we won't uh, review your eligibility for the second program. However, if you're not eligible for the first program or the program has closed, there are no seats, then we can consider your eligibility for the second program. But let's say if you only apply for one program and this, you're unable to get into this program, and then after getting a rejection or after getting, you know, after, after, after getting to know that you can't join the program you have applied to, if you then want to join another program, then you'll have to submit a new application by paying a new application fee. So it's always a good idea to select two programs when you apply. Uh, after applying, please create your MyNate portal account, contact the English Language Test Center, make sure they send their results to Nate, upload your transcripts electronically to your Nate portal, and then once you have uploaded your documentation, please mail courier official transcripts and documents to Nate. We can only issue a full letter of acceptance once we receive your physical once we receive the physical versions of your official transcripts and documents at need now once you have applied uh, how do you track your application uh, check your my need portal for assessment and admission decision if you're admitted, you'll receive an e-letter on your NATE portal. And then once you receive your uh, NATE portal, I think within 48 hours, you should receive your letter of acceptance, which you can then use for your study permit purposes. Now, after getting your letter of acceptance, you still have to pay a deposit tuition deposit of $1,000 to accept your seat. Now, this must be done within 30 days. So let's say you receive your letter of acceptance, you start the visa process, but you have not paid the deposit within 30 days, then unfortunately, your application gets canceled. So it's very important that, you've, uh, that you make the payment. Also, when it comes to tuition fee payments at NATE, we don't charge you annually, we charge you per semester. So after you pay the application fee of $115, when you're uh, when you get your letter of acceptance you have to pay a thousand dollars as deposit and then after that there's a, a tuition payment deadline depending on the semester you're studying in and by that deadline we must receive your payment uh for 
the semester uh, that you're studying in. Now, in some uh, in some countries, especially the you know the SDS, the student direct stream countries like Pakistan, India, others, uh, one of the requirements for SDS is that you pay for a whole year, right? So if you wish to uh, pay for a whole year, that is possible. So you can just when you when you're making the payment online uh, uh, at NAEP, you just make the over you know you just make the uh, payment for the whole year. So that's a possibility. But in terms of our requirements, we just require you to pay for the semester. Now, when it comes to uh, documents that you should submit, uh, we require your transcript, your mark sheets. We require your completion certificates for all programs that you have studied. So if you're applying to a program at NEET, please make sure that you submit your documentation for your high school, your uh, 10th and 12th grade plus your post-secondary education, your bachelor's degree. And we need two types of documents. We'll need your transcript, which is your mark sheet, which shows all the subjects you have studied and the marks you have achieved, achieved in them. And we'll need a completion certificate, a certificate that confirms that you've completed the program. Now, in certain countries or in certain curriculums, Transcript and completion certificate is just one document. That's fine. You just submit one document. Both uh, the documents should confirm that you, that you have completed the program, and should also show us the subjects you have studied. In some countries, there are two separate uh, documents. So please make sure you submit both those documents. And it's very important that you submit all your education documentation, high school as well as post secondary, because let's say you're not eligible on the basis of uh, your high school, then our admissions team will still review your post secondary education documents to see whether on that basis, you're eligible to join the program. And if you have gotten your documents equalized through IQAS, WES, submit the equivalency as well. When it comes to uh, ELP approved, so IELTS, TOEFL, Duolingo, uh, Canadian Academic English Language Assessment uh, online test is, uh, and Pearson test for English Academic, we accept all of, uh, all of these and some more as well. Uh, we accept all these pro uh, tests. Right, so almost at the last slide. This is the last slide. slide. Uh, actually, so what's next? So if you're if you're if I've been able to convince you to uh, to join uh, Nate, you can apply through the link that you see on your screen. If you wish to explore a little bit more about Nate, you can take the uh, find your feature quiz. You can take the virtual campus tour. Uh, you want to connect with us? Please connect through uh, nate.ca/help. You can join us. Uh, you can uh, follow us on social media, Nate, uh, on Facebook, on Instagram. You can uh, visit our website, and you can uh, also uh, go on to our overseas events page. Now, uh, one thing that I want to mention, is we do work with authorized agents around the world. This link, if you click on it, it'll show you all the authorized agents that we work with. I think we must have a little over 40, 50 now. Now, these authorized agents understand our application process and will be in a position to help you with your applications. Now, the most important thing is make sure if you're working with an agent, make sure they are authorized by name. If you don't find their name in this list, it means they're not authorized and you shouldn't be working with them. That's all from me, uh, right at the 50 minutes mark. So we still have 10 minutes or more for questions and answers. Thank you so much for listening to me. Uh, I'm going to go through the chat to see if there are any, oh, Carla. Awesome, thank you so much, Inaid, for all that information. I do have a lot of questions here. Um, so the first one is, if you offer any kind of guidance on the visa process. Sure. Uh, thank you, Carla. So we do have uh, a licensed immigration professional. So we do offer visa uh support so we offer guidance so we uh, we help you understand the process so this uh, service is for 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 students who have already applied uh and gotten a letter of acceptance so absolutely so once you've applied to nate and you know you're going through the visa process and that you have some confusion you want to clarify we do have a team of licensed immigration professionals who will be able to help awesome thank you so so much um so this some students are also asking about um um, is staying in campus if you have like a residence or how does that work? Sure, no, thank you. Uh, so we don't have on-campus housing at NEED, but uh, we do have uh, partnerships with uh, other institutions, our partner institutions that, that are in the vicinity of our campus. So University of Alberta and McEwen University, they're very 
nearby uh, Nate, and there is a direct train that takes you from campus of University of Alberta or McEwen and directly uh, drops you to Nate. So if you wish to work, uh, if you wish to live on on campus, uh, then you can live either on uh, the campus of University of Alberta or McEwen University, and the full process, fees, etc. You'll find that information on our website. Now, because we are centrally located on uh, in downtown, there are residences all around us as well. So if you wish to rent in downtown, uh, you can. I think on average, you're looking at spending around $800 to $1,000 a month on rent, which will, for, for most international students, that'll be your biggest expense when it comes to cost of living. Um, one of the common tactics for international students is if they don't uh, want to live on um, if they don't want to live on campus uh, with the University of Alberta of McEwen, a bunch of students will sort of rent together uh, around the campus, uh, and you know that's one way of sort of sort of, sort of living uh, around Nate campus. Awesome! Thank you so so much. Here I have a question about scholarships. Do you offer any kind of scholarships? Sure, we do have a number of scholarship options for international students. There's a whole list on our website. In fact, uh, let me just open this. Uh, scholarship. I'm just... Uh... So... The internet is one of those days where the internet uh, is slow, uh, but as soon as it opens up, I will uh, share the link. Uh, but we do have a, a list of uh, uh, scholarship opportunities at NAE on our website. Uh, now, we one thing to note is, here's this link. Uh, one thing to note is we don't offer entrance scholarships of, uh, to international students right now at this stage. So it won't be possible for international students to come on a fully paid or partially paid scholarship to Nate. However, uh, as you will see on the on the on, on the link that I've shared in the chat, there's a huge list of scholarships, right? And depending on the program, depending on which year you're in, depending on your marks, etc., you may be eligible to apply to one of them. So once you become a student of Nate in your first year or second year, depending on the uh, requirements of the scholarship, you may be able to apply for a scholarship slash financial aid, uh, which should help a bit of your, uh, you know, uh, help you with a bit of your expenses for uh, for tuition. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. Um, here, I know we already talked about this, but I have some questions about this. So maybe go very quickly through that again. Can they work while studying? Yeah, absolutely. So let me let me just go back to my presentation. Let me open the slide. Uh, so as you will see on the screen here, uh, sorry, not here. Let me go back. Yeah, this is the right screen. Yes. Um, as you will see here, uh, international students can work while studying in Canada. And this is a rule set up by the government of Canada, right? Uh, if you are a degree diploma certificate student and you wish to work on campus, it's unlimited hours. You can work unlimited hours. If you're ESL, English as a second language or academic upgrading student, again, on campus, unlimited hours. If you wish to work off campus as an ESL academic upgrading student, you can't work off campus. But as a degree diploma certificate student, you can work off campus. now. The criteria set up by the government is that during your school term, so when the school is going on, you can only work a maximum of 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. During your scheduled breaks, you can work unlimited hours. Now, this cap of 20 hours a week, uh, this cap of 20 hours a week has been removed by the government until 31st December 2023. We, we don't know what's going to happen beyond that. Uh, but this cap of 20 hours has been removed. So uh, students, can, international students can work unlimited hours even during the school break, uh, during their uh, school term uh, until 31st December. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, here I have a question from Naz. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, uh, she's from, uh, it's from Turkey. Uh, um, is saying, do I have to have English plus Turkish in my 10th, 11th and 12th 
year. So I think this is related to the um, English requirements. Engl uh, so this, uh, so this is so. Just to clarify, uh, so English thirty. So I mean, I'm just gonna go back to my presentation. Uh, so. So what you see on the screen here, the English 30 and Math 30 subjects, they are different to the ELP requirements. So ELP requirements can be met through IELTS, TOEFL, Duolingo, PSN tests, etc. Right? And the scores you need in those tests are these. The English and Math 30, these are Alberta high school courses that you need to have in your curriculum when you apply to NATE, right? So ELP is different and English 30, Math 30, they're high school subjects. Now, when you submit your application to NATE, we will review your documentation to find equivalencies of English 30 and Math 30. Okay. As a general rule for most educational curriculum, uh, for English 30, one of the ways to uh, get the equivalency is in your 12th grade, you should have studied English language plus a native language. So the principle is native language, right? So if you're in Turkey, obviously Turkish is the, uh, is the native language. So that's one way you should be able to uh, meet the English study requirements. But then again, it, uh, you know, our admissions team looks at a few other things as well. Uh, so simply based on the principle of English plus native language, yes, you should be able to meet English 30. But there are other things that our admissions team will also consider when you submit your application. So obviously, ultimately, the final decision is theirs. But the principle is it should be in your 12th grade. You should have English plus your native language. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, here, I have questions about, do you offer any postgraduate programs? Do I, do we offer any postgraduate programs? We do have so majority of our programs are majority of our programs are at the undergraduate level. Uh, so there are uh, undergraduate diplomas, certificates, etc., uh, and bachelors. Uh, we do have a couple of post diploma certificates, as they are called in the province uh, of Alberta. So one of them is in cybersecurity. The, it's a one-year certificate. And then uh, we have another one-year program in data analytics. Those are the only two post-diploma certificates. All the rest are uh, undergraduate programs at NAIT. Perfect. Thank you. Um, here I have another question. Do you, um, do you accept transfer students? We do, yes. Uh, there is a process for it. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll see the full uh, your full list, uh, full details on how to how to request for a transfer. So, uh, so you will apply as a standard student, and then you submit your documentation, and we will review your documentation. And if we find that there is an eighty percent match between what you have studied and the program at NAID, then you know you have a decent chance of uh, getting your credits accepted. Uh, but ultimately, the final decision is with our uh, admissions team if they accept your credits or not. But as a process, yeah, it's possible for you to request for a transfer of credits. Awesome. Thank you. Um, here is a very cool question about how multicultural is the school and how is the, cult how is the cultural shock? Ooh, uh, well, I mean, that's a very co uh, cool question. So, I mean, it's a very diverse campus. I mean, Canada itself, uh, the entire, I mean, you know, the, as I said right at the beginning of the presentation, there are 250 ethnic origins ancestries in Canada, right? So uh, if you come to our campus, you'll see students from India, from Pakistan, from Africa, you'll see students from the Middle East, uh, you know, so it's very, very diverse. Uh, in terms of, a, uh, in terms of cultural shock, uh, it, I, I mean, I think, so, as a third culture kid myself, uh, I didn't find the cultural shock very difficult to manage. Uh, I think because Canada was founded on the principle of diversity, uh, I think everybody is very respectful uh, uh, towards different cultures. So you can definitely be yourself. Uh, there are Canadian values, uh, and you know, obviously, you have to respect them. You have to abide by them. Uh, but you know, as 
you are absolutely okay to uh, maintain your identity here. Uh, so in terms of uh, cultural shock, I would say it's, it's, it's pre, uh, reasonably manageable. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I have here, a if they studied in English already, do they still have to take any of the English language proficiency mm. tests? It depends on a few factors. Generally, for most students, uh, you would need to, when you apply to NATE, uh, you would need to meet the academic requirements and the ELP requirements, IELTS, TOEFL, etc. So the only exception or one of the exemption, uh, exceptions is if you've studied from a country where English is the native language of the country not the official not just the official language but the native language right so for example uh if you've studied in in the us for example if you study in the uk for example uh there are other countries in africa with official uh languages is is, is uh, and you know uh native language is also english so there's a, a whole list in fact uh, the slide i'm on right now uh there's a elp exempted country so nate.ca slash help if you go to this link you'll see a document that has a list of all countries uh, that are exempt from the ELP requirements. Now, Turkey is in one of them, Pakistan is in one of them, uh, you know, India is in one of them, etc. Right? Uh, but there's a, a whole list here, and you know, you uh, uh, if you uh, review the list, you'll see whether the country you're from is is on the list or not. Perfect. Thank you so so much. Uh... If they already have a bachelor degree in any subject, can you, can they do a second one? From our perspective, yeah. I mean, we we're not going to stop you just because you've done a bachelor's. Uh, so absolutely, yeah. Perfect. And uh, can we go very briefly to the application process again? Sure. Uh, let me just open my. Just going to go to the slide. So this is how the application process looks like. Um, the dates you have to keep in mind are, so fall 2023 applications are already open. Uh, they open on the 1st of October in 2022. Winter applications, winter 2024 applications open on the 1st uh, of March. And then uh, for uh, May intake, May 2024, applications will open on the 1st of June. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind, right? So when you're applying to Nate, uh, before you apply, when you're preparing to apply to Nate, you know, make sure you check the program, see if you're interested in the program, see if there's anything that you want to clarify, et cetera. You know, you can reach out to us on social media. You can reach out to us uh, through nate.ca slash help. Uh, and, you know, the link that uh, Carla has shared as well. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, you, you can go through that as well and it tells you the whole process as well. So, uh, you know, make sure you check the requirements and make sure the program is available that you're applying to, right? Uh, if the program, if you go to the program availability page on our website and it's it says closed or waitlisted, uh, then it means you will not get a seat. Uh, so there's no point in applying. Uh, so make sure the program is available. Uh, check your study permit processing time. Make sure that you know how much time it'll take for your visa to be processed. Take your English uh, ELP test if you haven't already. Uh, it's always a good idea to apply with a full set of documents. So sometimes students, if they haven't done ELP, they will just submit the education documents and, you know, so that they think that our, the application will, uh, uh, the processing will start. At Nate, things are, the way they are is we prefer to process applications when they're complete. So make sure you submit complete application that shortens the uh, the processing time uh, as well. So the more complete your application is, the better chance you have at getting your application processed in, 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 uh, in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, then you've done your English test, then get your official transcripts translated and notarized. So if you don't have, uh, if you've studied in a, uh, in a language other than English and your documentation are, is not in English, make sure you get them officially trans uh, translated and notarized. And then when you apply, you submit both the translated as well as the original versions of your documentation. 
then you apply through Apply Alberta. Uh, uh, so if you just Google applyalberta.ca uh, and just go through the whole process, you can choose Nate, you can choose program. Our application fee is 115 Canadian dollars. You can apply to two programs uh, with that fee. Then you create your Nate portal, make sure your test center, whether it's IELTS, et cetera, all of them, they have submitted your results to Nate. Upload your documentation, education documentation, and then the same documentation. Make sure you send us uh, through courier to Nate, and then we, you know that's the application process. And then you can track your application through your Nate portal. So this was more than a summary, but I hope this clarifies. That is perfect. Thank you so so much. much and we have reached almost the end of this session. So. Um, is there any final tips or anything else that you would like to share with the students before we wrap it up? Sure. No, thank you so much, Carla. Uh, look, I mean, thank you so much for, for everyone for attending. Thank you so much, Carla, for organizing this. You, uh, you and your team have been uh, lovely. So thank you so much. Uh, I really enjoyed the experience. Now, for the students, uh, look, I mean, I, I know how it is to you know live in the Middle East and then uh, wanting to study abroad and uh, move abroad. Uh, one thing that I can talk about, Nate, uh, I can specifically say about Canada, it, it is a very welcoming country. It is a very accepting country. Uh, I've always felt included. I've always felt uh, accepted in Canada. So, you know, that's one about studying in Canada. Uh, cost of living is is a factor everywhere. And Alberta, one of the benefits of being in Alberta, cost of living is really affordable. And then when it comes to Nate itself as an institution, uh, because we are a polytechnic, we will focus on your employability skill. We will help you develop employability skills, which will help you get a decent career in Canada. So Canada, Alberta, and Nate, I hope you, uh, you know, uh, this uh, presentation allows you to give more thought to Canada, Alberta, and Nate. And again, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to us through our uh, you know, social media pages. I can also mention our uh, international mailbox specifically for international students. Uh, so international at nate.ca. So you can send us an email there as well if you wish to connect with us. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, I also do uh, recruiter calls, one-on-one -on -one conversations with students. If, you know, if there are a particular situation that you're handling and you, want, uh, you wish to, uh, you know, discuss that with me, very happy. So, that's all from my side. Thank you so, so much, Nate, uh, for, for being here, for sharing this information for, with the students. And thank you guys for sharing with us a little bit of your afternoons um, to hear us and to know more about Nate. And again, if you have any more questions that were, that were not solved today or do you want to apply, but you're like a bit insecure on the process or anything like that, please don't hesitate to reach out um, because I'm super sure that they are, they will be super willing to help you and super happy to guide you in this process. So thank you everyone again uh, for being here and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carla. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.